So in this video, we're going to clear up another misconception before it becomes a problem. What exactly is a node when we talk about a node when referring to a circuit? So we're gonna go over some textbook definitions here, which I've written out in advance so you don't have to watch me write them. A node is the junction of two or more branches. Okay, great, well, what is a branch? A branch is any portion of a circuit with two terminals connected to it. Okay, great, what does that mean? So for example, if we draw our usual very simple circuit with just a battery and a resistor, well, I would say that this circuit has two branches. So anything where you can draw a bounding box around part of the circuit, and then there are two external, sorry, external terminals to connect to, that is a branch. So the battery itself is also a branch. And a node is a junction of two or more branches. So I have a node there and a node there where one branch meets another branch. I have two nodes in this circuit. Node and node. And as you connect more stuff in series, this is usually pretty easy to deal with. So for example, we're gonna have our battery and a circuit with two resistors in series. Now note that I could define each individual resistor as a branch here, because each one has those two external, external, if I can pronounce that, terminals to the rest of the circuit. Or I could define kind of a bigger branch that encompasses both of those resistors, and then again has those two external terminals to connect to the circuit here. So if I went through this circuit and labeled each node where two parts are connected, or two branches are connected, I could call it node A, node B here, and node C down here. Usually when adding things in series, that isn't much of a problem where people tend to get tripped up is when things are drawn in parallel based on how circuit diagrams are drawn, especially because some textbooks or websites might use dots to indicate where wires join. So they don't all do this, but some do. I usually don't bother doing it when I'm sketching the diagrams, but you might see things that use a little, a little dot that's slightly thicker than the rest of the line to indicate when two wires join like this. And your instinct is to look at that and think, oh, that's a node, and this is a node, and these are somehow all different nodes. And that is not correct, okay? Remember that in a circuit diagram, these lines just represent zero resistance wires. Okay, so all of, if you went through and labeled this, oh, that's node A, and that's node B, and that's node C, and that's node D, and this is node E, F, G, H. Okay, that is not correct because all of these points are electrically equivalent. That is actually all just one node, call that node A. Okay, and this is all just one node because all of those points are electrically connected. They're just directly connected by zero resistance wires. So that is just node B. If it helps, and this is what I had on the first slide, but kind of went over very quickly, you could also just redraw this circuit like this where you have physically a single node up there. Remember, you can go back to the video on circuit diagrams and how you can change the physical layout of the diagram without changing the electrical connections. So if it helps you to visualize it and understand why that circuit only has two nodes, then you can draw it like this. So there's node A and there's node B. I could define all four of these resistors in parallel as a branch because it only then has two external connections to the rest of the circuit and you can still treat each individual resistor as a branch, but again, those nodes are not actually separate things. So if I look at these two resistors and say, okay, well, this one has a, a connection there and this one has a connection there, again, those are electrically equivalent because they're just directly connected by a zero resistance wire. So be careful, don't get tripped up. When people start applying Kirchhoff's current law, which we're going to see in the next video, people can get tripped up in circuits like this and start kind of trying to apply that to each junction here where you look at the currents flowing in and out of each one of these lines at each one of these intersections and that kind of becomes redundant 
What you really want to do is look at it like this, where you're only analyzing that single node.